Hello and welcome in this PyAuto GUI tutorial. What PyAuto GUI is, is basically a Python library that is mostly famous because it allows the user to control the mouse or keyboard using Python. However, there are a few other functions that it allows us to do. And for that reason, I decided to make a separate tutorial for the type of functions there are. And in the first video, I will focus on controlling the mouse. So what we will do is we will make a short list of what we can do using the mouse and then how we can do the same thing using Python. So let's make a short list. What, what can we do using the mouse? Well, first is move the mouse, um, I would say cursor around the screen. Then we can click buttons, but we can also hold uh, buttons. So when we drag a folder from left to right, well, just drag a folder in general, we do hold uh, one of the buttons or we can use the mouse to scroll. So how do we do this with Python? Let's, uh, let's take a look at, for example, we have some buttons here and how do we move the mouse cursor to, let's say, this help button up here? Well, first I'm going to import Py Auto GUI. Now, I can use the Py Auto GUI dot position to get the X and Y coordinates of the current position of the cursor. So if I print this out, you'll notice that I get X 318 Y 65. Now what this means is basically if you count the pixels from left to right, the mouse, my mouse position was on the 318th pixel and from top to bottom, that's the Y coordinate, it was 65. Now how many pixels are there? In order to find out that, what you need to print is PyAutoGUI.size. So my screen has 1920 pixels and the height is 1080. So that is my resolution and you can, the, the top left, basically the first pixel that you have is zero, zero. So what I mean by that is uh, that it, it starts counting the pixels from zero, zero onwards. So if I check my auto GUI dot, let's say on screen, on screen, and I specify zero, zero as parameters, it would return true. So this pixel exists. If I specify, for example, a negative pixel, a negative coordinate, then it's not on the screen. If I specify 1920 by, let's say 1080, which is a resolution that has been provided by Python already, it would return false. It would not say that it's on screen because again, it starts from zero, then it's one, and then it ends by 1919. It's not 1920. So if I check if 1990 as an X coordinate and 1079 as Y coordinate is on screen, it would return true. So this is the last pixel that I have on my screen. So again, X goes from left to right and Y increases from top to bottom. So now knowing where the help button is, we can have, let's say X to be equal to 318 and Y to be equal to 65. And then we can use PyAutoGUI dot move to and then X, Y. Now, if we do this, what Python will do is it would automatically and instantly move my cursor to that position. And as you can see, it's already here. Now, it's difficult to see that. So I advise you to do the same thing yourself, but use duration equals, and this specifies the number of seconds you want Python to take to move the cursor to that position. So if you use two seconds, then you can see that movement slowly from the current position to the, this X and Y coordinate. So I would advise you to do that at least now for tutorial purposes to learn how it works in the background. And then later on, you can complete it, skip it so it's a bit faster. Now, when you know the, the X and Y coordinates, then this is the right function to use. If in case you want Python to move the cursor left, right, up or down, then you can use move rel. Now what this does is it moves the cursor relatively to its current position. And again, it takes X 
it takes the x and y coordinate however these are not the target position of the mouse it's basically if um, we move it 500 pixels it means move the cursor 500 to the right and if i provide here for example 600 then it means move it to the bottom 600 pixels more it, you can use also negative to move it to the left or again negative as the second parameter to move it more to the top so if you run this then it would go to the left and it would go up and that would be quite easy to see and again unless you specify duration it would instantly somehow transport the cursor to that position otherwise if you want to see that progress i encourage you try it like this and then you will see the cursor slowly move from your position to the one that is relative according to the parameters now how do we use the how do we use the buttons how do we click on that button well we already know how to move to a given place well the next part is pi auto gui dot click simple as that now, in my opinion this is the only line that you need in terms of clicking and you can specify all types of clicking only with this line and what i mean by that is first of all they are already built in for example right click um, auto gui there's double click uh, there's triple click there's a uh, middle click and all that but you don't have to remember any of this because in here in the brackets you can specify button equals let's say right or you can say clicks equals two which is basically the double click and you can also specify interval is equal to 0.1 this is basically the time in seconds between the clicks so you can specify five clicks and again 0.1 second between every click so in my opinion although there are these already built-in functions you can just forget about it why you should learn uh, more syntax when you can just learn one line and then change the parameters in the brackets but again it's up to you now let's i have some folder in the background so let's get the location on the screen of this empty folder and let's use this formula to to open it so first i need to get the x and y coordinates of it so what I'm going to do is again I'm going to say pi auto GUI dot position. I'm going to print it out. Then I'm going to save it in these x and y coordinates. Move my mouse cursor to that position and then double click. So first make sure that you have it on the right folder. And here it is. So eight. 849155. What I'm going to do now is again move to that position. I, you can put duration one second if you want to see your, your, your mouse cursor moving, otherwise, you can just skip it. Then let's say two clicks in a 0.1 second of interval. Now, and I also have to specify left click if I want to, to double click and open it. So yeah, I have it on my other screen, so the folder has been opened. So this is this is one way, um, of course, to, to do it. Again, you can do pi auto click, auto GUI dot double click, but in my opinion, yeah, it's just something that you don't have to do. Now the next part is holding button, hold buttons, and what I mean by that is when you want to take a document from left and move it to the right, then you need to basically press. The, the left click and then hold it until you have the document moved somewhere else so how do you do that in python well first we need to go to the coordinate of the file that we want to move so let's get that i'm going to comment this part and let's get the position of the text document so we have i would have x y coordinate 386 and the y y coordinate at 152 and the folder coordinates would be let's say x and y2 so first what i want move to x y 1y in one second then pi auto gui dot mouse down 
button equals left. So keep that mouse button down. Next, I want exactly the same thing to be done. So move to another location on my screen, which is the x2, y2 coordinates, again in one second, and then pyauto GUI dot mouse up button equals left again. This is, I'm quite sure that this is the default, but it's good to have it and to, to be aware of it. So I'm going to remove this print, we no longer need it. So what, what should happen now is Python should go to the text, to the test document, um, grab it, put it in the folder, and it should be done within two seconds. So this is the one second, it takes it, drags it to the second one, and it's in. But this is basically um, how, how you would use the mouse down or mouse up button. So it took us four lines to get that file into a folder, but we can make it even better. The first line, we'll leave it in, but the second line, we can use pyautogui.drag2. So if we drag it, we can drag it to some x and y coordinates, and we can specify duration again. So now the x and y coordinates are again x and y2, and we can remove this part. So basically what drag does is it uses exactly the same part, so mouse down, mouse up, and it takes these coordinates in there. So this is just a bit easier way or a bit faster way to, let's say, take the document and again, move it to the folder. It, it saves a bit of code. Now, the last example that I have in this tutorial is related to using the scroll. Now, how do we do that? I'm going to remove the code that we have so far and I'm going to use pyautogui.scroll. Now, scrolling can be in both directions, so it can be a positive or negative amount, and I'm going to use financialtimes.com just as a website that I can use to scroll on. And I'm going to do a minus 1000. So if I run this script, what you will notice is that my website has scrolled a bit to the bottom. So if you, if you do a minus, it goes down, and if you do a plus, so let's try it one more time. So I'm going to just run it and you will notice this part moving. So if I go plus, it will go, of course, up. So that's basically how you would use uh, the Pi Auto GUI scroll function as well. And uh, that would be all for this tutorial. The next one would cover using the keyboard again, using Python. And uh, thank you for, for following it until the very end. Feel free to subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.